Hi, and welcome to today's video. And welcome back to my channel. I really hope you're going to enjoy today's video. I'm sharing all of the things that I made in May and I'm really excited to share some of these projects with you today. If I'm honest, I lost my sojo a little bit in May. I had quite a few projects that I had planned to make in May that required quite a lot of fitting and concentration and a lot of time in those early stages of just measuring and twirling and fitting. And I'll be honest, I don't find that stage of the construction as much fun as others. So that just meant that I lost a little bit of motivation along the way this month. And in the end, I just decided to make a few things that just brought me joy, which is what our hobby is all about anyway. So there are some things I put in my May plans video that I have not yet made, but they are still very much works in progress. And I will hopefully be sharing those with you in the coming months ahead. So to start with what I did make this month, the first thing I made was another version of the French Navy Vetiver top. If you watched my April makes, you'll see the first version that I made of this one. And here is version number two. So I bought this beautiful cornflower blue linen when I was in New Zealand. I bought it at the fabric store, which was such a gorgeous place to visit. If you ever can visit in person, do. It was such a lovely shop to browse. And I picked up this beautiful blue linen. And this month I saw it sitting in a pile in my sewing room and I thought, you know what, I've just got to get that made up and worn as soon as possible. It was bringing me joy. So I decided to put it into a garment. And what I did was I went down to a shop near me, a haberdashery that sells vintage buttons, and I picked these out. And I just think they are so sweet on this top. I just love the style of this shirt. I love the princess seams. I love the cropped fit and I love the ruffle. I tend to wear quite a few high waisted jeans and trousers. And so this really works over those high waisted trousers. So the Betty Bear top comes in sizes A to H and A is for a bust of 32 inches and H is for a bust of 43 and a quarter inches. However, the sizing is quite generous. So I fitted more into a size D with my bust 36, waist 30 and hips 42. But I decided in the end to size down to a size C. Now the finished measurements of that are a bust of 38 and 3 eighths inches and a waist of 37 and a half inches. Obviously because this is cropped, it doesn't matter so much about the hip measurement. So that still gave me a couple of inches of ease in the bust and five or six inches in the waist. So I thought that was still plenty. So I did size down and I absolutely love the fit of this one. I love the little capped sleeves and yes, I'm really, really pleased with it. I've already worn it quite a lot and I'm looking forward to wearing it more as the weather warms up. Now the linen itself was really, really lovely to work with. It is quite a soft linen and um, it's quite a fine weave, so it's lovely to sew with. It just behaved itself beautifully and did as it was told, and I love the lightness of the finished make. I also think the crispness of the linen does hold the shape of the bodice really nicely and of that ruffle at the bottom, so I'm really pleased with using that linen. So the instructions for the blouse are fantastic. They do show you in detail how to finish off all the seams on the inside with French seams, for that particular version, just because I wanted to get something made to try and get my sojo back, I decided to finish it with just an overlocked seam on the inside, which worked fine. It looks still very neat and tidy on the inside, and it just meant that it came together and I was able to wear it and get back sewing again, which is what I wanted to do, and just enjoy the process, which I did. So as I was going through Me Made May, which I participated in this month, what I noticed was I have quite a few summer sundresses that are quite strappy and the weather's not quite warm enough yet to wear those without something underneath. So I've got a couple of basic t-shirts in my wardrobe that I wear when I layer my pinafores and things but I could do with another one. And particularly with the dress that I made in April. So I made the uncut project Holman dress back in April which I absolutely love but because of the low back my t-shirts kept coming untucked. So what I thought was I'd love to make a bodysuit to go into that one. I made the Rowan bodysuit by Megan Nielsen in the winter for a couple of long sleeved layers, again to go onto my pinafore dresses, and I loved wearing them more than I thought. So I decided to make another one. Now the Rowan bodysuit is fantastic, it comes with three t-shirts or three bodysuits. So version one has short sleeves, version two has three quarter length sleeves, version three has four length sleeves. And then there's also version one which has the crew neck, version two has a v-neck, and version three has a turtleneck. So I don't know how many options that is, many many options in the same pattern, 
which is fantastic. I do love that about Megan Nielsen patterns. There are often so many variations that you can put together in her patterns to make different things, which I just think is so good in terms of value for money in a pattern. So this is my Rowan bodysuit that I made. It's quite hard to show you on screen, but you can see it's a basic t-shirt that goes whoop, all the way down to the bottom there. Um, I'll show you some of the details and I'll pop in a picture so you can see it on. I made this in a gorgeous tensile cotton jersey by Mind the Maker from Sew Me Sunshine. It is so soft and luxurious to wear next to your skin, which is what I wanted. I thought if I decide to wear this under those summer sundresses, I want it to be a fabric that is cool and breathable. So that's why I chose this tensile jersey. Now I chose the white color. It is a little bit see-through if I'm honest. <laughs> so you have to be careful what you choose to wear underneath it. However, because I made this as a layering piece to go under pinafores, under sundresses and things, I'm probably not going to wear it on its own without something over the top. But just a word of caution, I do think it is relatively see-through. I certainly couldn't find an undergarment to go underneath it that didn't sort of show through. In terms of this pattern, I fall into the size 8 for the bust, a size 12 for the waist, and a size 14 for the hips. However, I didn't want this to be too fitted across the bust. I don't like t-shirts that feel too constricted, and this one is form-fitting but I didn't want it to feel too tight. So I did actually size up to the size 10 for the bust, which is a 37 inch measurement, but it's absolutely fine. The fit is really nice. It doesn't feel too tight across the bust, but it is form fitting. This pattern, the instructions show you how to put elastic in over the leg opening so that it's just quite nice and form fitted around your bottom. But what I found with my last two versions is that it just sometimes feels a bit tight. They're still great to wear, but they're not perhaps as comfortable as I would like. So what I decided to try on this version was using knicker elastic to finish that leg opening. Now, obviously this is something I'm wearing underneath trousers or underneath pinafores, so no one's ever going to see this part anyway, so I figured it doesn't matter what elastic I use as long as it's comfortable. So I decided to finish the edges with this white Pico knicker elastic that I had in my stash. I just bought some of it from Minerva quite a while ago just so that I can make knickers as and when I have uh, jersey scraps left over. So I decided to use that for the leg opening and it is so comfortable. I cannot tell you how comfortable this bodysuit is to wear. So I'm really, really glad I use knicker elastic instead of regular elastic. Obviously, if you were planning to wear this so that people could see it, you would obviously want to use elastic so that the edge was then rolled under and hidden. But for myself, I decided to try knicker elastic and I love it. I love it. It's so, so comfortable. Now, I decided to make it with the crew neck because that's a finish that I quite like. And then next time though, I think what I would like to do is try to drop the crew neck slightly. It does feel quite high and that's fine. I still will wear that a lot, but I think my preference might be just to drop that perhaps an inch in the front here, just to give me a slightly more relaxed fit around my neck. The only other thing to say about this make is I did use the new Gutterman Mariflex thread to hem the sleeves and for the top stitching around the neck so that I could use a straight stitch and I cannot tell you it's a game changer the stretch in that thread is amazing I don't know how they do it it's magic but it's fantastic I loved using it It was very easy to use and I love that it just looks a bit more like a professional finish without me having to use a cover stitch machine which I don't have so that is my Rowan bodysuit by Megan Nielsen patterns something I'm going to get a lot of wear out of I think this summer. Now the next pattern that I made was one that I did share in my May plans video and that is the True Bias Zoe tank. Now this is a pattern that comes as a cropped tank, a tank or a dress and ultimately I'd love to make the dress but I just wanted to test the fit first before I leapt into making the dress with my lovely fabric. It's a really interesting pattern, it's got a lovely v-neck at the front and a scoop at the back and I just think it's going to be a lovely relaxed dress for summer and I'm really looking forward to making this. So I've got some beautiful Mind the Maker green jacquard that I bought to make a jumper in the winter a couple of years ago and I had a good amount of that remaining and one of my goals that I sort of have come out of Me Made May is really getting the most use out of those fabric scraps that are sitting in my stash. So I decided to make the twirl from this green jacquard and I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I wore it in May when we had some of those really hot days with some ready to wear jeans and I just popped my Heather blazer over the top or my um, Marlowe cardigan over the top and it was just a really cute layering tank underneath some of my jumpers. 
um, and with my jeans so I absolutely love it much more than I thought I would so this comes in a size 0 to 18 which is a bust of 32 inches to a bust of 44 and 5 8 inches so it's drafted for someone who's 5 foot 5 and is a C cup now I'm just under 5 foot 5 but I am a B cup so I looked at my measurements quite carefully and in the end I decided to go with a bust of size 8 my waist fell into size 8 too which was great but my hips fell into size 12 so I did grade between the waist and the hip and that turned out perfectly. The length of the tank is so, so nice. It comes just down to my hips, my high hip probably, which is perfect. I want it tucked into jeans for the most part and it tucks in beautifully. It doesn't sort of come out. It's long enough to tuck in, but also should I want to wear it over the top of my jeans at any point, it's long enough to wear out without sort of riding up too much and showing my tummy. So I'm really pleased with the length of it. And I'm really pleased that I graded out to the 12 because it just sits nicely on my hips and it's not tight at all. I really like the v-neck at the front, it doesn't sit too low, it's quite a high v-neck. And the scoop at the back I really like as well because it just shows some of your back. But again, it's not too deep, um, so I, just, I do feel covered, but I do like the style of that v-neck. It's also finished with this 5 8 inch binding that you cut from the same fabric. And that was really fun to put on. That was a new skill for me, which is something I am really trying to do this year, is make some garments that teach me some new skills, particularly with jersey, which I'm not so familiar with using, so I'm really enjoying that. She's got some really great techniques in her instructions for how to put that on so that it sits securely whilst you're sewing it into place, which worked beautifully. I had some spray starch and I had some double-sided fusible tape, which washes away once you wash the garment. And that just helped to keep the binding in place so that I could sew it and I knew it was going to go on really neatly and I'm really pleased with the finish of it and yes it's been a joy to wear. So that's another May make that brought me a lot of joy was the Zoe Tank by True Bias. So as I'm sure you're all aware this weekend is the Jubilee weekend and my children have had various events at school to celebrate the upcoming Jubilee. My oldest son had a Jubilee garden party where they all brought in cakes that they had baked. It was lots of fun. The brass band was playing and the children were all playing lawn games and it just felt really nice and summery and festive. So what I wanted to do for this was to make a dress. Again, like I say in May, I was looking for different things to just spark joy again in my sewing practice and Sewing for this event brought me so much joy and it was so much fun to wear this at his Jubilee event. So the dress I'm talking about did feature in my week of sewing video. So if you've not seen that yet, I'll put a link up here and you can pop across and watch that after you've watched this video. So the dress I made was this Nina Lee Bakerloo hack and it's in this gorgeous block print cotton lawn from Cloth Atelier. They have such a stunning collection of these cotton lawns on their, on their website. I do recommend popping over and giving them a browse. I could buy so many of them. I've wanted to sew with a block print fabric for a really, really long time. And I saw this one at the Stitch Festival and I couldn't resist picking it up. They are quite narrow fabrics, so I did end up buying about three meters, and I did use the majority of that for this pattern, just so you're aware if you do decide to purchase. Now, this is just such a light and lovely cotton lawn, so and I knew it would need lining. So what I did was I bought some white cotton lawn from Sew Me Sunshine, and I decided to line it with that white cotton lawn. So in Nina Lee patterns, I tend to fall into a bust size 10, waist size 12, and a hips size 14. Now, the finished measurements for the Bakerloo dress are such that you can pull it over your head and get it on without the need for zips or anything else. There's just one button in the top of the back with a slight sort of keyhole opening underneath so that you can pull the dress easily on over your head. Now, I love the fit of that bodice on me. It's a bodice that works really, really well for my shape. And so what I decided to do was size down one size in that bodice, but put in an invisible zip in the back. The back piece of the Bakerloo dress is cut in two pieces anyway, because you sew it up to about here and then finish the opening with the button at the top. So that was straightforward. What I just needed to do was to cut this back skirt into two pieces as well, so that I could sew the invisible zip down into the skirt to give me enough room to put that on and off. That was a fairly easy tweak to make and I really like having the zip and obviously that means I can have the bodice slightly more fitted. The other two things I did was, was I added my favourite sleeve, the Anthea Allen Anthea blouse sleeve to the bodice, which in this light cotton lawn there's a lovely puff to it but it's not too too much. 
think if it's in like a stiff cotton it can stick out so much and add a little bit too much width to my body but in this light cotton lawn it just sits beautifully I did not line the sleeves because I didn't want them to have too much bulk to them or body to them I simply lined the bodice and the skirt the other change I made was obviously I did not put on the glorious big Bakerloo collar. I instead added this standing ruffle. Now this was inspired by some of the beautiful dresses I've seen by Joanna Sands on her website. I'll link them below so you can go and have a browse. But they're always sold out by the time I get to having a look at them. So I decided to have a go at making this ruffle collar for myself and I love the way that that turned out. Because this is a pattern I've made before, I knew that I could whip it up really quickly. I didn't even have to look at the instructions this time. But what brings me joy as well in my sewing practice is finishing things off in a really beautiful way on the insides as well. I know people don't see the insides of the garments apart from me, but it brings me joy to make sure that they're finished beautifully on the inside. And both my grandmother and my nana, who were also sewists, used to always check the back of my work when I did cross stitch and things as a little girl, um, and would always give us compliments and praise us grandchildren when the back was as neat as the front. Maybe that's where my desire for a neat inside comes from originally. So in terms of the inside, I did make sure that I finished off the edges really beautifully here around the neck ruffle. And then I also sewed on the lining with the machine by sort of just manipulating the seam so that I could sew it from the inside out. So that that lining is just sewn beautifully onto the sleeve. And then whilst I was looking through my ribbon stash for another project, I came across some of the lace that I use for my daughter's heirloom dresses. And it's just so pretty. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to use some of that lace for myself too. So what I did is I decided to finish off the hem of the lining using some of that beautiful lace and I get that from House of Smocking and I'll link that below as well. So I used some of that beautiful heirloom lace just to finish off that hem and again it's not something only I will know is there but it brings me joy. And this month, if you can't tell already, is all about what is bringing me joy in my sewing practice. So that is my Bakerloo dress hack and I just loved wearing that one and swishing around in that and I'm looking forward to wearing that again this summer. It's such a light and floaty dress and I know it'll get a lot of wear in my handmade wardrobe. Now there was a lot of excitement when I mentioned that I was going to be sewing the Closet Core Blanca flight suit. This is a pattern I've had my eye on for such a long time but I've been really scared to sew it because it just looks really complicated and trouser fitting is not my forte. It's just not something I've had a lot of experience with. I don't wear a lot of trousers and it's a new and wide world of adventure trouser fitting that I'm just not sure I'm ready to go there yet. However, at some point I decided I need to just be brave and give it a go. So that's what I did this month. I did start twirling the Closet Core Blanca flight suit. Oh my goodness. The trousers part of this are really hard to fit. Now again, I fall into lots of different sizes in this pattern. My bust is a size eight, my waist is a size 10, my hips are a size 14. So grading the bodysuit with all of the different like crotch depths and thigh measurements and arm measurements. I'm so grateful they're all there, but oh my goodness, it was a lot of numbers to wade through. <laughs> so in the end, I decided to make the bust of the top of this bodysuit a size 8, grading to a size 10 at the waist and then out to a 14 for the trousers. So that's what I cut. Fortunately out of some calico that I had bought cheaply for twile making. So here's twile number one. The shorts of twile number one were, oh my goodness, too short. So <laughs> Once I'd finally managed to get into the bodysuit and zip it up, yeah, it was just very clear that that was definitely not going to work. They were far too tight around my thighs. So the top half of the boiler suit is more of a blousy fit and the trousers are more form fitted at the thigh and then I chose to make the straight legged option which then would flow down from the thigh. But even for fitted around the thigh, these were fitted around the thigh. So I decided that that wasn't going to be a goer. There was also very definitely not enough crotch depth in my first version. There's no way I could walk, let alone sit down in this boiler suit. So that came off, or well they came off, very quickly and I had a go at twirl number two. Now I added two inches of length to the trousers and I actually took an inch off the top of the boiler suit so that that sat more near my natural waist. So I added a couple of inches to these trousers and even then they were better but they still just fitted quite strangely around my hips, probably because I had to grade out from a 10 to a 14, which is quite a big difference between those two sizes. 
So what I decided to do in the end was I have made the spring jumpsuit in the past and I absolutely love the fit of that. Now the waist sits in a very similar place to the closet core boiler suit and so what I thought I would do is I would try those trousers on the top of the closet core <laughs> blanker. They're wide leg trousers, I know that they fit me, I know the crotch depth is correct, I like the way that they sit. So rather than fiddling about with those trousers anymore that were not working for my shape, I just decided to use a pair I already had that I knew worked for my figure. And I'm so much more pleased with them. It's not the finished flight suit, but it is the finished toile. So it's got one sleeve and not the other. It's got this, the, the zip in just so that I could check the fit. It's got some trousers, actually shorts, and I loved the look of the shorts. I wondered if I could even make this as a short boiler suit, but... I'm not sure. And yes, they went on fine. I obviously checked the pattern and measured them all up and made sure that the waist would match the top of the spring jumpsuit trousers. And they did. And again, they look like the picture because they're still wide leg trousers. So the next part of the process will be to put the pockets on and I'll have to adjust those pocket pieces accordingly with the new trouser pattern pieces. So this project has kind of been pootling away on the back burner all through the month of May and I've just picked it up as and when I feel the inspiration hit to have a go at that one. Now I've finally got a twirl that fits, I'm feeling much more motivated to actually cut into my real fabric and sew up the proper boiler suit because I do love the look of this one on now that it's made. I'm not going to pop in a picture of me in the boiler suit twirl because nobody needs to see a calico twirl but rest assured I am working on this one and it will be probably, hopefully, maybe in my June makes video so do come back for that one. Right so the last thing I did for myself this month was to amend this blouse I'm wearing today which is the Patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company. Now this is one that I made quite a long time ago now, it was in a fabric that was gifted to me by Minerva in exchange for a blog so I'll link that below. But I just wasn't wearing it and I've been so inspired during Me Made May by the videos that Teresa, who is Lost My Thread, has been making about how she's been altering and amending items in her Me Made wardrobe that just aren't working for her for whatever reason. So I looked at this blouse and I just realized I had not reached for it for the entire month of May and I was trying to work out why and I think it was the long sleeves. So it did have two long sleeves, which it doesn't have anymore. I think a lot of people who've made this blouse have found the same thing. The sleeves, which are bracelet length, just fall above my wrist, which I just found quite irritating if I'm honest. I either wanted them to be at my wrist or kind of like a three-quarter length but just sitting on my just above my wrist just didn't feel quite right now I know that that's bracelet length that's all good I just didn't prefer it so if I was to make the long sleeve version of this again I would lengthen it by a good probably two inches in the sleeve just to make it finish where I want it to finish so I thought Do you know what I'm just gonna chop off the sleeves and see if I wear it more and I love it so I've chopped the sleeves off here to make it into more of like the short sleeve blouse version and I'm really enjoying wearing it today. I've worn it with just some ready-to-wear jeans over the top for just mucking about in the house with the children today because we're on half term but I can also smarten it up a bit by tucking it into my high-waisted jeans with a belt and styling it up a little bit like that. So we'll see. I'm hoping I'll get more wear out of it now but I love the fabric, I love the collar of the patina blouse and I'm really hoping that now that I've chopped the sleeves off I will give this blouse a bit more of the wearing that it deserves. Now finally I'm going to mention the last thing that I made in May which was this dress for my daughter. <laughs> now this is the Bluebell Sundress by Flora Child Patterns. I love Flora Child Patterns so much. They're so beautiful and timeless but I have not yet made one. I saw this sundress made up on Instagram quite a bit and so I felt inspired to give it a go and I made this out of one of my husband's old shirts. <laughs> Now if you'd like to see more of the process of making this one, I did film a video which were, which went live last week all about the making process of this dress. It's a bit like a week in sewing video really because it took me a little while to put together but it was lots of fun. So do go and give that video a watch if you haven't already. So yes, my husband had this shirt. Unfortunately the collars and the cuffs had worn away so it wasn't wearable really anymore for him. But the rest of the fabric was fine and very very wearable and I didn't want it to go in the bin. It couldn't be given to the charity shop because of the state of the collar and the cuffs. But like I say, the rest of the fabric was in perfect condition so 
I decided to make the Bluebell Sundress. Now the Bluebell Sundress comes with three different styles. It actually comes as a little peplum sort of blouse with buttons down the front. It comes as a sort of midi dress with buttons down the front again, or it comes as a maxi sort of tiered sundress with buttons all the way down the back. Now I decided to sort of go my own way a little bit with this. I decided to button it all the way down the back, but in the midi length. And what I used was the original button placket from the shirt for that. And I used the original hem of the shirt as well, which saved me a bit of time, which is great. Then because you can see the dress is gathered here with some elastic and gathered into the bodice pieces, I decided that there wasn't going to be enough width in just the shirt front and back pieces alone. So I actually added in a panel which I cut from the sleeves. And you can see the original shirt sleeve placket here, which I just sewed up and around so that that's secure, it doesn't open up anymore. And I just put that as a panel on the side. So I don't think you would know it was there unless you knew it was there. So I think that's fine. And it just gives it a bit more of that twirl swish factor that it needs. Bluebell Sundress goes from age one to seven. I always size up for my daughter because I want her to wear things, get as much wear out of things as possible. And because this has got elastic here, I knew that it would be wearable for a good couple of summers, I hope. So I did decide to make the size four or 104 centimeter size. And it's perfect. You know, it's quite big across here still. And it's certainly very long on her but I'd rather have it too long than too short and not get much wear out of it. So that's perfect. Because I was making a size four out of a shirt, I did not have enough fabric to cut a lining for the bodice. So I just finished off the neckline and the sleeve insides with bias binding that I had from my Hevea jacket that I made right back in the autumn. So that bias binding is still going strong. And I'm really pleased with the finish of that. I think it's fine not to line the bodice this time, especially if it means that I just get to use up some really nice fabric and it doesn't go to waste. The other thing I decided to do to finish off this dress and just add a little girly touch was to sew some bouillon roses onto these buttonholes. Now I followed a tutorial from the brilliant Sarah Classic Sewing and I'll pop a link to that in the description box below because I know there are quite a few people on Instagram that asked for a tutorial and she does a brilliant bouillon button tutorial. So I'll pop that below in the description box if you're interested in having a look about how to do that. She does it so brilliantly. I don't think I'm gonna do another version myself because hers is fab. So if you'd like to go and watch that, do head over and see that tutorial. But I absolutely loved putting those buttons in. It just adds, I think, a little special finishing touch to that dress. So that's everything I got made up this month. In the end, I did make a few things, although a couple of them were jersey makes, so they did come together quite quickly. But like I say, the focus this month was on sewing things that really just brought me joy. If you have enjoyed watching this video today, it would be so fantastic if you could leave it a like. And if you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I would really love to have you as one of my regular viewers. Do come back next week where I'm going to share a fabric and pattern haul, lots of lovely new fabrics that I'm excited to sew with in the next couple of months. So I'll say goodbye for now. I hope you have a lovely week ahead full of lots of happy sewing and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.